people who, who harm kids need to burn in hell. Yes, my friend. I totally agree with you, 100%. And that's what most of them were in for. Oh. Some, for own, some for their own kids, Sean. Oh, and that, man. That, that's when it, that's what stirred in me. That's what kicked it off in me. You know, I've got a maniac here. He's caught on the bus in the city centre of Belfast with a bomb. So this big guy had one of them hanging over for the first floor with the ankles. Wow. He, if you don't get rid of every single in here, get them off these wings or he's going right on his head. Paul said, Brian, he could have stood there for a day. This big pal of mine was like 20 stone, former bodybuilder, huge. And they ran all the doors in Blackburn and whatnot, you know, the clubs and stuff. He was a serious character, Paul Gallagher, but me and Paul, they took us out to the police station, Sean. You want to see the way the marks was out of there? 20 of us. All the locals. Next morning, they were all back up in the prison. Grassed us up. See the demand note, the note. There's only two places in Britain, Sean, where they used the term Paul. Northern Ireland, in Scotland, England and other places, it's wing, A wing, B wing, C wing. So one of the, one of the prison officers had, was in the army and had been, and he turned around and said, the job wrote it. There's three guys from Northern Ireland in there. One was the bomber and the two other fellas, and they, they call it Paul. And they'd been in prison. So we've got three Irish, not three Northern Irish, who know the prison system and they were called halls. I was in a hall bill. And he said, Dad, did you and what and the judge the same guy who sent me to prison came up and done a like a mock courtroom, Weldon Williams, the Welsh fella. So because we didn't get they were right on the ball Sean. In an instant we made up this door, locked up me. They were right above us. We were not getting anywhere near that roof. So the scouser, idiot, mate, we're talking mid January. Rips the sink in the toilet. There's no water or nothing in there. And then he smashes all the windows. We're sitting in a room and it's like minus three, mate. Wind up the heavy sea. So it wasn't like we caved in. We just went, listen, we're coming out. Alright, so I'm here today with Brian and we're going to be talking about his incarceration experience, in particular one of them for some brown and he did get a massive amount of time, a disproportionate amount of time really, but that was because it happened on a certain island and thank you for joining us Brian and where are you based these days? I'm in Glasgow. And how did you end up on that island? I initially went to the Isle of Man to find work. We, 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 we were rooted here, Sean. We had nothing at all work-wise. It just wasn't happening. So we got a, a, a heads up. We went to the Isle of Man. There was a lot of building work going on. So we got jobs there, but that they, they came to an end. They, and then we got the word up that they went to Jersey. So we followed them on. And on the site one day, what happened was schoolboy era, lifted with my back, didn't bend my legs in you, and my back just went. And my girlfriend at the time from Manchester, she worked in a local supermarket and she she got to know the local folk. So what happened was she stayed in this little scheme called the Lasquet. The two girls were at work, but I knew the girl Caroline that owned the house, her boyfriend Yannick, would be there. So I went to the house, it took me forever, Sean, I was bent over, back, just done in. So knocking the door, knocking the door, and I could hear him in. And I thought, what's she up to? It? And I'm shouting, Yannick, please, it's Brian, I'm hurting my back. So we ended up, he was like, then after a while, and you didn't hide this thing kind of correctly under the table, and I said, piece of tin for you. And I said, 
What's that big black thing on that tinfoil? So his answer I took serious offence to. I thought it was opium or something. I'd, I'd never touched my grand flat in my life. You know. Any drugs, I played football, was always fit out, training and stuff. And he said, that's smack. It's not opium, that's smack. You, you just glass weed, you know it. And I says, look, mate, do you think every glass weed is a heroin user or something? I says, mm, get, your, get your head on, please. And he said, oh, what's up anyway? Why are you so buckled over? I said, I'll try to have a bag of cement and I just bent over using my back, didn't bend my leg. I said, the pain of mine's incredible. That was the first time I touched heroin in that house. Right, for the purposes of YouTube, Brian, we're just going to call it brown. Okay, mate, okay. Okay. So that was the first time I used brown. And after taking it four or five runs of this on the line, uh, chasing it, I was told at the time, and four or five lines shown and I wanted to go back to work. I could have been out and played an hour and a half of football in 80 minutes. I couldn't believe that this thing just obliterated the pain that I had. It just... And that's the single biggest mistake or one of them that I made. And it just it just took over my life, Sean. It just consumed me. I, did, I became an, a, an addict. How long did the good time last before it started to go into the side effects and the consequences? It wasn't even a month, maybe really. two and a half, three weeks, Sean. I started getting the clothes for it because we ran out of money and using every day. And there's no benefit system or stuff like that over there, Sean, so we have to work. And that was the reason why I went to the first place, was to work, you know. So, always got the work. But uh, the labouring, I don't have a trade of any kind, Sean. So, the big Irish fella I was working with, he used to shoot, where's the Labradors? He's called his Labradors, so labourers, you know. So, uh, that's how it started. That's how I got involved with that stuff, the brown. So, so things started to go, things started to go d- downhill two and a half weeks after you first tried it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. End up, the job went out the window. And... How did it feel, the withdrawal? Oh, it's absolute devilment, Sean. I would tell anyone, please, if anyone's watching this or listening to this, I know you, you've got a lot of followers, please don't ever touch that brown stuff. Please, I'm, I'm really, I'm 15 years of age and I don't look in the mirror often because I don't recognise the person that's in the mirror. How long ago was this, Brian? That was 98, Sean. And we got arrested on the Saturday morning. My father passed away. Uh, and the local police were giving their due. Half the island's police were looking for me and they managed to get a, a, a lead. And I was told to go to the police station. Went to the police station and said, they let me use the phone in the police station. Phoned my sister and one of my sisters. And you, dad's gone, Brian, so, so I had to go up the road. Terrified. Sure. I lost about a stone and a half. And my oldest sister, what's wrong? Look at the state of you. The rest of them just went quiet, never said the word. They didn't want to mention it, Sean. But my oldest sister being the boss of the family, and she was the one that was, well, you're not, you're not, you don't look like a wee brother. What's happening to you? You went away with a mop of blonde hair, you've come back pure grey, Brian. A stone and a half underway. You look like a skeleton. What are you doing over there? The knowledge we have of that island is a beautiful place. And I said it is. My sister said, it's a pity you're not beautiful anymore. It was in a bad way, mate. It was in a bad way. But one thing I didn't do, Sean, is... Eh, we always grafted to get something. Uh, I don't have convictions for theft and any of that nonsense, you know. There was always about a wheeling and dealing and taking or just from that one and delivering it to that one. And that's how I was getting by. Had you been in trouble with the police before, Brian? No. No. Uh, I came from one of nine. My parents had nine kids. 
two older sisters, four older brothers, and two younger brothers. And wow. they, uh, I start, I became the misfit, if you like. It was a very sobering time, Sean. I was terrified to go home from my own dad's funeral. I just, as I said, I couldn't look in the mirror. I, I, I still don't use an electric shaver. I don't, I don't even look in the mirror. I, I just don't know who the person is. I really gave myself a hammering. And that loved me, but I didn't love that. That's that's what Brown does. And it was on Jersey, was it? It was on Jersey yeah. where you got arrested. Yeah, that's the first time I ever touched the Brown stuff in heroin. Not in Glasgow, oh. mate. I played football. How, how, how did the police catch up with you? Yeah, I believe somebody told them. Uh, again, a girl came up the night before. The flat me and my younger brother were in. I, I, I had no idea. I had no, there was no intention of my younger brother coming with me. So during the time we were over for it, I think my sister and my brother went, it'd be a good idea to take Mark, Brian. He needs a job and that, get him out of Glasgow. But, so I couldn't say no and I took him. So we get over and I said, Mark, look, mum to God, no. So my young brother, okay, Brian Stump. So when we got arrested that morning, sure, it was a Saturday morning. It was actually Scottish Cup final day in FA Cup, and Rangers were playing hearts. And I'm just going ballistic in the pe- in the cells, banging the door, asking what the score was at the Cup final, because I'm a Rangers man. And the guy, the officer, came down and he said, you want to know what? The score? <laughs> of a football match? He said, you're looking at seven years, son. I said, away you go. Two point seven three eight grams, Sean. That 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 was it. Because I've spoke at the island, man. I spoke in the prison, and I, I met people who were doing huge amounts of time for small amounts of drugs. Mm-hmm. And they said that's the way it is out there. So, were you aware in Jersey of the consequences? Yeah, I was. Sean. I was. What happened was, Sean. There was that. There was an, a well-known case called Campbell Malloy McKenzie. There was five law lords came from England to lay down the sentencing policies on drugs, you know, the various sentences, possession, things of like what it was. And, and they said the, the reason they stuck out the seven for the, 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 the little amount was because of the unusual high purity. So you believe that you were snitched out? Oh, yeah. The guy came up... Uh, I couldn't ever see somebody withdrawn, Sean. Even today, I'll give somebody a 10 or 20 quid. I see them in a bad way. I, still, I don't use anyone myself. And uh, a guy and a girl come up next morning, boom, through the door. The flat that uh, my young brother and I were in, that wasn't a good flat. We could have, what are you talking about? Doesn't, we, we just, we're just staying here for the night. But how could you do that to someone, Sean? When the guy said, hey, I'll go and stay with my mum because she's not keeping too good and knew oh. your young brother can take the flat. How do you turn around and do that to someone? Bad karma. I, I, I couldn't turn around and say, but it must be his stuff. What What were you doing when the cops came through the door? Sleeping. And what was your first <laughs> recognition of what was going on? Uh, the the first one through the door was a uniform and that fright and that the shock but when you see it's the police you think nobody I'm, they're not going to harm me it's nobody that's going to hurt me I'm not going to get beaten or something so there's, there's that double-edged sword I'm gone for a long time here but at least I know it wasn't somebody coming through the door to uh, hurt or injure me and my younger brother so they weren't screaming at you. They don't pull guns and stuff in Jersey. No, 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 no. There's no, there's no guns. There's no guns. And what I have to say, Sean, is the way I was treated was incredible. They were uh, probably the most civil of the police I've ever come across. And when did they get the first guy through the door? Actually, was a Scottish officer. You know, so we speak back slang. And I was trying to explain to my young brother. 
And what the batch line is, Sean, I'm going to, I'll give you a little bit of it. And this is what I said to Mark. Art nigh, east side up in nigh. Ought nigh another, ought nigh another way. O nigh omen kind. What I just said in batch line there, Sean, in the back of the van, Mark, don't say nothing. Just say no comment. So that's what I said in batch line. And the Scottish officer turned and says, why are you telling your wee brother not to say anything? <laughs> he was from Glasgow himself, mate. He was <laughs> the guy got me a beauty, you know, so I just fair enough, he's up. But there was that my young brother, now I was responsible for that. If I put my hands up right away, Sean, they're gonna take him through a trial with me. He's going down as well. Where was it found, the Brown? Eh uh, just to the left of my, I had it in my hand, and I was sitting, and I must have just fell asleep, Sean, and it just, it fell onto the floor. So there was two grams, did you say? Two point seven three eight, to be precise. And you didn't have a chance to throw it or flush it no, or anything. No, no, they were, they were honest. They were honest. We were. It was like it was summer, and it was like half five, Sean. You know, like half five, there was no way uh, I could get to it or anything. But even if I would have, I could have, uh, there would be no two ways about it. I would have been. But just the door and where I was, just on top of me right away. They virtually, they just stood beside my young brother, never touched him, but there's like three officers, white, 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 all on top of me. My chest, my, you know, my groin area, but not anything. Just, just the way they freed him, just pinned me to the mattress because I think one of them seen some on the floor. And I, he said, what's that in my foot there? I could see, almost see him pushing it back. And a young female officer picked up. She said, I think this is the prize. And what and was that, your brother saying to you in the van? My younger brother? Yeah. Uh, no, he was just shocked. He was, he was just devastated. Because what happened, Sean, they took us to the police station. And what they do in Jersey, we were in the police station for the, you know, the Q&A and stuff and what interview. And about five o'clock, they took us straight to the prison. Which, uh, the name of the prison is Lamoy. Lamoy Prison, it's in St. Brella. And they remanded us for a week. So, the situation with the flat, not being mines or marks, I had to hold out. And they went and got the fella for a bit. But and she just so he denied all knowledge. I'm sort of a denying all knowledge, although they've got this stuff. And I just said, Look, this is what I'm prepared to do. This is the position I am in. When we go to court next week, I'm the only one I want my young brother out the dock, no charges, totally walks free. When I go back to the prison and I phone Glasgow, the particular place, and I speak to my younger brother, then I'll speak to you and I'll tell you what I want to tell you. And that's what happened. They've they, they done that for me, Sean, because they knew my younger brother was only on the island. The short while I'd been on and off the island since 1990, Sean, you know. So they knew my young brother was innocent, really. They knew that I was the, the one. I didn't know how long they, they, they had their eye on me for. They had their eye on me for about three or four years, Sean. What was the conditions like in remand? Yeah, I had no complaints, Sean. But the, I thought when it came around to Christmas and, you know, they would just put a, a menu Thing under your door, so starters, Sean, mussels and uh, garlic sauce and herbs and all that stuff. And I'm like, what? No way. That this lot, because some of them, some of them, they, they, they tested the jobs, the job, job, job. And I just happened to be on the wing with all them, the tested jobs. And I'm like five, seven, eight stone. I went, mm. oh, I don't want any grief, please, don't leave me alone. Mm. 
I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a violent guy or a aggressive or whatever. You know, so I did, I got left alone and he just took to me after a while. Hello? When we wake up in the morning, we get out of bed and we start our day with Koro Snacks. Koro is a healthy snacks brand focusing on bringing additive-free natural ingredients to their customers with fair prices in bulk packaging. They have everything from nut butters to free from baking ingredients to cooking essentials and of course the snacks. <laughs> it doesn't get healthier than this because all those other snacks have refined sugars, colours, preservatives and additives. Koros snacks have none of that. Oh, I can't wait. So I'm going to go for the bio energy ball today. Ooh, Salty pistachio. A little uh, chocolate bar here, I think. Oh, the coconut chocolate bar. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Mm. Want to try it? Ooh. <laughs> so, what makes Coro special in comparison to others? Coro avoids using sulfur, refined sugars, preservatives, colours, and other additives. For a 5% discount on Coro's products, use the code TRUECRIME with no space in between true and crime. The link to Coro's online shop is in the description box on YouTube. Thanks for supporting our sponsor. And uh, so I'm reading this menu and the starting, Sean, was one of the starters, uh, the starters they said was the, the, the muscles and stuff and then uh, patty. No, no way. I scrunched up before I scrunched up. There's also on this menu turkey, stuffed turkey, roast potatoes, blah, 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 Brussels sprouts. Wow. Oh, Sean, get this, mate. Uh, oven baked salmon. And also, there was three, no, chicken or something it was as well. It wasn't just like a chicken with spuds and that. It was more like a chicken, something you get a shiny little eye. Chicken chew mine kind of thing. And so that was the three. There were three uh, starters that you could take from. Three, three, main, three main meals. And then I looked down the list and lo and behold, it says Black Forest Gato with whipped cream. Strawberry cheesecake, and I can't remember what the third one was or something. And I scrunched it up, so I was banged up in the last 23 hours a day, Sean, because there wasn't a whole lot of work in the pool. I've just done a Michael Jordan, scrunched it up, lay on my bed, my bin was, and I tried, I thought, I'll just think straight in the bin, I thought, that's where that's meant to go. About half an hour later, the door opens, the big prison off the big screws. Uh, All right, Brian, how you doing, son? Where's your menu? And I said, what? He said, where's your menu? I said, what are you talking about menu? I said, somebody put paper under my door, muscles and starters. And he said, it was not put under your door. Where is it? He said, it's in the bin. So he just knew the way to hit the bolt. So he did the door can't knock, you can't be up. So he's hit the bolt, he's come over. And he's, he said, you need to fill that in. It was me put it on. <laughs> I was blown away. See, see from that time, Sean. Over there, they're all terrified to get a... Uh, Moved to the mainland. I was disgusted with that menu, Sean, and I put in for a transfer. I could have got out the last third of my sentence and they get you a job and you pay the prison like £30 a week and they stash everything else for you. This guy's walked out with 15, 20 grand. You know, it's and the system halves great because it gives you something to go. You're not going out with nothing, Sean. You're going out, wow. you've got a job, you've got a job, Sean, and a job, Sean, and You've got a good heads up because you've got a right two quid. And, and, and it's incredible. So I gave all that up. And me and a German get flown to Winchester, uh, South Hart, and I was in Winchester prison for a couple of months. Done the millennium. How, and how, how far into Jersey did you get moved? Uh, I'd done 17 months, Sean. All right, before we go to Winchester then... What what was it like in the prison in Jersey? Was the violence? Was the no? no. Uh, it was a rare occurrence, Sean. Very rare. You didn't see any? No. 
What that, about guard guard brutality? Not nothing at all. First name turns with the guards. It's an island. Some of these guys who were locked up, they were in these some of these guys' classes at school. They were childhood friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's crazy. That's how small the community is. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Uh, Did you have cellmates? Well, a lot of them didn't have to test it. So I just, yeah, I, you know, I was over in their backyard. So I didn't think, I didn't, I, I didn't feel that I had any defences of any kind. I said, yeah, well, well, I ended up about 10 guys in, in 30 days, 60 days. And did you get along with them all? Yeah, no problem. There was guys from Sunderland, guys from Leeds. Guys from Wigan, Barnsley, you know, one or two islanders. And no, there was no brutality. And the the time I spent with them, the customs actually gave me a couple of packets of cigarettes that they'd been taking off people who were huh. going to France and take, bringing over to... You go down to a place called Gori, but the way we would say it would be Gori. And the, the they call them Jersey Beans. That's the name for them, Jersey Bean. And the, the one of the Jersey boys said, "Where's Gory?" I said, "What? You're a Jersey Bean. You're an island, and you know." He said, "You mean Gory, Brian? There's a castle and stuff down there. Beautiful, Sean. Absolutely beautiful. Just further down, a bit at St Catherine's. And the very man, and they actually gave him. They allowed him to have this address." Ian Fleming, 007, 007. Oh. Yeah, they, 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 because he came, you know, such a big, you know, breaking on the bond stuff. Wasn't um, Curtis Warren in Jersey? Curtis, yeah. Uh, I, I watched that one with you, Curtis, and I believe it was a million pound, the cannabis, and he got 13 there was another young lad from Liverpool. I don't want to mention his name. And half a kilo of brown. They actually went out to discuss whether they'd given them a life sentence or not. They gave them 13 and a half years for a half kilo of brown. Wow. So if, it was so, if, if the conditions were so good, why did you transfer to Winchester? Because of the menu. Why should I be living up for what I've done and the chaos that I've caused? And, uh, I was provided with jobs and I abused it, Sean. I wasn't raised like that. And I, I, when I first seen your one talking about it, I don't believe you were raised like that either. I believe you came from a good family. Yeah, definitely. I detected that very early on when you were, I watched your one uh, when you were telling about it was America you were in, wasn't it? Yeah, it's heartbreaking for my mum and dad to have yeah. to go 5,000 yeah, miles to visit me, all that stuff, yeah. That one, mate, and I thought, well, that guy just uh, took a wrong turn. See, that guy, he, he's, a, he's actually a gentleman, that lad. He, 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 I said, I would put my, my, my everything on it, that he comes from a good family, just like me. Yeah. And what, what what was your parents going through when they realised you were incarcerated for the Brown? My parents were gone, Sean, both of them. Oh, okay. So that was gotcha, a plus. Yeah. That, that, I, I somehow drew some strength from that because mm. my parents were devastating me, especially my mum. You know, yeah. she had seven boys. My boys, my boys, my boys, and that's all she's gone about, you know. But that's what it was. That's why I moved, Sean. I just, there's people outside who weren't getting food at that, Sean. Worked all their life. So you you were how many months before Winchester? And what was it like arriving at Mitt Winchester? Uh, chaos. Absolute chaos. And this guy I'm going to mention, he's actually passed away now. So there's no issue, there's no problem. Do you remember the, the, the funny money, the the cash thing, the 50s pound notes? With the, Was it in the news, the, that one? one uh, Stephen Jory. Okay. He, 
bribed a perfumist for the, he opened a perfume factory up in Acapulco and he made about somewhere around about 300 million from this. So much was genuine perfume and then topped up with the water. So you sprayed it and it smelled nice. 20 minutes later, you smelled like a dog again. Oh. <laughs> you know, and 300 million, he reckon. He said, he, whatever he gave, bribed the, the perfumers for, what, what they never said that, what the money was. And one of the best characters I have ever met, and he, he took to me the way I was about football fanatical. And I have to say, he's, he's gone, it was well known. Tommy Comerford. Does that ring a bell? Not off the top of my head, no. Liverpool. He was one of the first international. I met him when he was 70 in Lintone, which was the semi open cat sea. Uh, they called him Tacker or Top Cat. He's been in a number of books. You know, uh, the London faces, they don't, the novels and stuff, don't. He was the only one mentioned in Frankie Fraser's book. Tommy was the first one to use burning gear. Uh, the vaults and the safes, you know, noise, they weren't blowing anything. And uh, stayed in a council house all his life. But he was probably, he was the first biggest, if you like, smuggler international uh, in Britain. Then he was, he went, I don't know if you know anything about football, the young lad Michael Ball that played for Everton and then came up to Rangers. Because I was in I was in America for almost twenty years, so I lost track of it all. Well, I'll just I'll just give you a quick one on it. Uh, yeah. Tommy, you're crazy about football. You're fanatic. He said I thought I'd come across. And he said, "Listen, I'm going to tell you something." So Michael's up in Glasgow with his mum and dad. He's definitely going to sign because it was as he signing as he not. Michael's aunt, who was it? It was his mum's sister. That was Tommy's girlfriend, although he was married. You know, he, he, he was some character. You need to have a wee look up on him. Tommy Coma for a uh, top cat, but he, he's the only one that was mentioned by the, the London mob. You know what like they are? They don't uh, give anybody any highlighting and there's just a face. But they don't. Yeah. But Be one chance was... I had an idea, Sean, that this wasn't a frying pan into the fire. This was cool, calm, relaxed into asylum. When you say asylum, what was it like at Winchester then? How, how oh, mad was it? There was chaos every five minutes of the day. Pool cues and pool balls and crack, crack. Hi. So there was violence every day? Oh, almost every day. I mean, I'm going, I should be sitting eating mussels and black forest cattle and I came here. But that's just, it's your upbringing that does that to you, Sean. Did you feel threatened or were you okay? Once I got to know Stephen Jory, I was all right. Because he was a well-known face. He was well-known in London. I believe it was his father-in-law had a big place on the Isle of Wight. And that's, they had the house and then it was like a barn stuff. And that's where all the printing material was. And they were printing off the 50s. Loads, loads, of, loads of cash or loads of money. He tried to call it funny money, hmm. but somebody had already had that title. And so he, he wrote, and the book became loads of cash. And I believe he wrote a book called Supergrass as well. So, so before you got in with him then, did anyone try and test you or heart check you? No, no, no. no it didn't. What, what was the craziest violence you saw? Oh, uh, the worst, the worst I saw was some poor guy in the shower, and that the sock, the sock with the the pool ball stuff. The guy didn't stand a chance. He had his back to him at the time as well. Sean. I was in the shower. That was it was like four of us, and the, fa thankfully the weight, but the guy was like say number one, and I was number four shower. So it was all down that end, and I just kept washing away, turned my back to it, and just. I don't see nothing, nothing to do with me, just letting them know that I haven't seen anything, seen nothing. And you know what it's like, the street. What happened? When? Where? No idea. Was that over debts? A lot of it's over debts, isn't it? 
Always, Sean. Always. Brown dips. Brown. And uh, you probably know as much as I do about who runs it all in there. It's not guys that look like me and you anyway. I'll tell you that, buddy. That's all I'll say on that matter. I don't want to uh, become like making any discriminative marks or anything, but that's who runs it all, mate. So in Winchester then, what was your routine like? The the routine was uh, was pretty all right. I, I ended up I got a little job, yard man. <laughs> I, don't think, I think they trusted the job more than they trusted the, their own crowd down there, you know. <laughs> so I got the job as a yard man and I just wanted to do my time, John, get my head down, do my time and not to be an issue for anyone. So what I also have to tell you, this is going to blow your mind. One of the five law lords who came over and set down the sentencing policy was Lord Carlyle. So I got leave to appeal. And if you lose that appeal, you get an automatic six weeks onto your sentence. And you have to do the full six weeks as well. They held me down this place called the custody suite. Uh, and it's barred. And they sit and watch you 24-7 to take you up. They have to see your hands at all times, Sean. They want your hands when you're taking care. But the way I sleep is just what I've done for my baby. I sleep in the fetal. And my, I put my hands together like this, Sean, and put them just behind my knees. Right? Every five minutes. And you end up the rain, Sean, you know, uh, sleep deprivation. This is going on and on and on. They had me down there for 11 days, the custom. Nobody knew where I was or nothing then. You, you don't get to a phone call or nothing. I, I just couldn't believe the power the the authority, the customs have compared to the police. You know, in the police state, it's like 72 hours, I believe, Sean, for normal, but terrorism and stuff, it's a bit longer. But, I'm like, two days, this is three days, 11 days. And what they got, they got, they thought I'd swallowed something or banked it, but I didn't. What they got is what I had. They thought they'd seen something in the next ray. They take you to the hospital, Sean. And they x ray you. To see if you've secreted anything. And they thought they'd seen something that was, well, it was just constipation from the brain. That's all it was. It wasn't anything. But they, they weren't taking any chance of any kind. So they handed me over to the customs and that, they take you to a place called the Custody Suite down at the harbour. And I spent 11 days there. The, the place they put you in is just brilliant pure white. There's no opening gaps or, or any kind where you can stash anything. So they come in first thing in the morning before they give you your breakfast. And they say, right, Brian, we're going to search the place. And as we told you yesterday, if there's anything in here that belongs to you, so they take you out of that one and put you into the next one. And that's where they kept being. They kept they out that, searched that, put you into that. And that's what they've done for the, the whole 11 days. And then went back up, made the, another court appearance. And it was just like a fully committal. But November, Sean, I went uh, for sentence. It was just a straight guilty. So because I was I mean, I'm not an aggressive person, an angry person, Sean, but when you're struggling, you're, you're rattling, you're strung out, something must have happened before previously with these customs officers sitting. Just, you know, the bar gates. Like, but when, when I went down, there was a the big sheet of plastic perspex. So what you've got on, all I've got on is my boxers, socks, and the, the white forensic suits. And I just freaked out. I jumped up and I turned round and I went to kick. Hey, I want to sleep, I want to sleep, I need to sleep, please. And I went to kick the plastic thing. Just to I caught the bar as well, mate. Then the damage it done to the, the, my ankle bone. I caused more damage to myself, but just at the bottom of it, Sean, I'd cracked it. And they fined me £200 in the court. For the cost for that, 
or 60 days in prison. Chet Sandu's book is finally available worldwide on Amazon. He's one of our most viral podcast guests ever. The book is called Self Made, Juice Paid, an Asian kid who became an international drug smuggling gangster. Do you want to read some of the back, Jen? Yeah, go the blurb. In 1999, Chet Sandu was arrested at gunpoint in Alicante Airport for smuggling the largest quantity of illicit pharmaceutical drugs in Spanish history. Interesting. Overnight, he went from living in the shadows of the Costa del Crimes underworld to being labelled a notorious supervillain in the international press. Incarcerated alongside murderers, rapists, and terrorists in a super maximum security wing. He had to navigate a world of murderous knife fights, prison breaks, drug taking, and high stake power plays. Good bedtime read. In Self Made Jews Paid, learn how a British born Asian kid with disabilities raised in a corner shop emerged as a protector of his family from racist thieves and hooligans. Be prepared to be entertained, informed and offended by Chet's no-holes-barred account of raves, drugs, bodybuilding, entering the fashion industry. Did you know that he dated Kylie Minogue and Naomi yes. Campbell? <laughs> latest interview. Working the doors and life in one of the world's deadliest places to be incarcerated. If you enjoyed Chet's podcast series with us, there's a lot more detail in the book. Check it out. Worldwide on Amazon, ebook, paperback, and audiobook. So after finishing the guilty plea, third off for that one. So four years, eight months, and it's two thirds over there still. It's not the huh? So after doing what I've done out the four eight. The six weeks that I got for losing the appeal, you have to do every day of that. It's not two thirds there. So I, after doing the two thirds of the four eight, I had to do the full six weeks. But you get called to the governor's office. I was in uh, Linton Prison, uh, just outside Doncaster, and he called me over again. He said, "You finished your your uh, what you had to do the four year eight months." You now have to start this six weeks for the loss of your appeal. And then I get called back up again and he said, I've never known anything like this. The amount you had, and here you are back in front of me again for me to tell you, the 60 days that you got for the fine, you have to do the whole 60 days. Mm. Well, consent, consent. Now, that worked. I think they thought I was something bigger so what I wasn't a tosham I, was, I, was, I wasn't a fish of any kind I was just a wee tadpole I, I wasn't there was more feeding my own habit so but is that where was, you went is that where you went after Winchester was uh, near Doncaster I went to Billingdon first just was that the, uh, not really too sure Sean's kind of uh, what happened was we stopped at our like a petrol station on the motorway. And there was another, you know, the, the vans, the big white vans with it. There was one sitting there. I was taking from the one traveling from Winchester and putting that one. And they took me to Billingdon. Spent the night in Billingdon. That was it. And then by the time we got to there, they just took me straight to Doncaster, the Doncaster prison. And just spent the night there. And then I was taken to Lintel. They knew I wasn't a threat or a so they just put cat cat C semi open prison. And that's what I meant. Sounds like to. Sounds like you were working your way back to Glasgow. Yeah, I what what you have to do, Sean, it's a one for one. There wasn't many guys from Jersey doing time in Bar Linney, I'll tell you that, my friend. So that you you could do that, a one for one swap. But there was nobody in Jersey serving any time in Scotland, so, so you I, couldn't I, get to Barlinny. Couldn't couldn't get couldn't get it, mate. Couldn't get the. That's the only way you can do it, Sean. You can only get the transfer if it's a one going one way, one going the other way. So that's why uh, Havrig. I end up in Havrig as well. 
So, so all right, just, just 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 list all the different prisons in order you went to them. Oh no, just from that journey, or all yeah, the from from the beginning. So you start out in Jersey, then right. Winchester. I went. I was in Lamoy prison in Jersey. I then went to Winchester. Moved, travelled me on to Billingdon, which was about 200, 250 miles from Winchester. I then went to Doncaster, spent the night there. Uh, I then went to Lindholm, which was just outside Doncaster. And then I went to Havrig, and it was an absolute toilet. And I just pleaded with the governor, could I go back to Lindholm? And what's wrong with my prison? He said. I said, I said sir, I said, Governor, it's, it's not about you or your prison. Uh, he said, but you're closer to home, Mr. White. Isn't that because you know what they put in your file when that he's trying to get? He said, it's right here. Your, your very own statements, you, you want to try and make, you can't get one B1. So you've been working your way as close to the border as you can to make the journey shorter for you when you get released. He said, now you want to go back to Middle England? He says, you'll be 10 minutes down the road to the border. I said, Governor, I'd really appreciate it if you could just... I don't, I don't fit in here. And we're having the look of a user. I think you need to go into that prison, John. I'm swarming around about me. I'm thinking that I had something. So it was like I, 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 well, it was like I was a target for him. You know, all the users, they didn't have anything. They, they didn't know that I'd spent like the best part of two years or over two years already getting moved from prison to prison. They thought I was just somebody that came in. And most people, when they go to court, they, they always take a newspaper with them, don't they? So if they know they're getting a sentence, so there's always something to take with them to give them a bit of comfort when they go. And this is what I think they all thought. I could, they couldn't get peace from them, Sean. That's the place where I felt that was more open uh, than Lintome, if you like. But uh, that, that's where I felt the most threatened, Sean. I really did. And how aggressive did they get? Oh, they're just, you've got, you've got, you fucking jack, you fucking you. All that stuff, you know? Sweaty sock, jock strap, you fucking get out. You know, if we have to take you in the toilet. This and that. He said, you'll be getting a shampoo job and stuff. And I'm like, what's that? I never did play. And what is a shampoo job? The, sh the, sh the shampoo job is them. Sticking up your anus. And like a, what's that? There's a thing that they do. I heard Robbie Williams cavity thinking. search. They're doing a cavity search. Yeah, but there's a thing you get and it just flushes you all cleanly out. Laxative, laxative. Right, man. You know, so that, they were prepared to. And I just freaked out. And that's, I went to see the governor. I said, please, I have to go out here. I, I, I feel threatened, intimidated, whatnot, you know. Uh, Anyone in particular? I said, no, everybody. <laughs> Are you sure you're not getting paranoid, Brian? He says, well, it could be, Governor, I said, but I've done over two years already eh, without, you know, losing any time being put on the court or anything. I said, I just got my head down and done my time. I just wanted to get back out and get home. Eh, I had to do what I'd done, you know, the, this, the charge that I was done with. That's it. You know, I'm done. So I just want to do my time and get out. And that's it. I mean, even I had a go at this character, not a go as in aggressively, because he was originally Scottish. Does the name Roderick New ring a bell to you? No. Officer mm. in the Green Jackets, trained at Santos. You know of the Menendez brothers in America, don't you? Yeah. Well, they were the Channel Island Menendez. The, bro the younger brother, Mark, he passed his university. He, he was uh, very highly intelligent, but Rod was a hothead. And uh, the two of them come onto the island for their parents' anniversary. 
Mark had a flat in Jersey, so he went off to his own flat. The day before, Roderick had been out buying shovels and tarpaulin, murdered his mum and dad that night in the house. Mm. You know why? Why? The young brother Mark was investing the money later. Roderick was phoning him, and Mark's like, there's this much left, there was this much. And this Roderick thought, you're spending my inheritance. I have to do something about it. The money that his parents worked for all their life, he killed them. <sighs> Mark was an accessory after the facts. He got 50% of it. Roderick never got a dime. Mm, brutal. Governor of Lamoy Prison was a former army officer as well. When you get a life sentence in Jersey, you only do a year to two, and you go to the mainland to do all the courses and everything. He was there the whole time and then went to, what was it, Fort in Essex? That's where he went. Mm. He done all his time. The governor of that prison made sure. He was the prison accountant. He was doing the accounts for the prison. He was next wow. to He was next to me, Sean. Roderick knew. And my young, one of my nephews, I went to stay with my sister when I got released. And my young nephew came in one day and he said, one of your pals in the paper, Uncle Brian. I thought he went with the Glasgow boys. It was Roderick knew. That was him transferred to Ford. And he was out going to college. And, you, and he got along with you? You got along with him? Yeah, no, no issues. No, no issues, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was just the contempt I had for him, Sean. Mm. For something of, you know, that nature. It was just, I, I had no time for him whatsoever, buddy. Did you see any sex offenders get smashed? <sighs> Mate, I started a riot in Victoria Road Prison, trying to go onto the roof. There was one, there was a, a former IRA bomber there with me, uh, Ray Cronin. There was a big guy from, serious character from Blackburn, Paul Gallica, and a few others. And I was in the, the Victoria Road prison, the, the old prison. You wouldn't have been in on the Isle of Man, Sean. You probably went to the new prison, I believe, was built. There was only one, I think. It's, um, it housed every security level. Was it called Victoria Road? It, there was, was some the documentary old... made about it. Was, it. was it the Orange Brick Build in the old Victorian prison? I think so. Yeah, right. That's the one I was in. Right across the road, there's chalets. So we got one of these chalets working. The people on the chalets said, right, we're going to stop putting out the people who stay all year round. Because some of them are not coming back and we're not getting the income. So they said, so the holiday makers were for the chal the chalets were for the holiday. So these people on them just said, you know what? See the people are staying and living and working here. We're just going to allow them to keep it all year round and uh, an ongoing lease. First morning, Sean, I didn't know him. We came the back way, opened the curtains. The first thing I see is all the gates. Oh, shit. Victoria Road Prison. As soon as I seen that prison, Sean, I said, I'm going to be in. So where I was, 115, you just had the bottom flat and just went up. That's all it was. It just went flight. So I was in number 15, right at the very end, in this big, huge door. They had a huge dormitory, Sean. Cooker, TV, the works. And I could, I was right next door to them. I could, I could hear just about everything. They came alive at night, Sean. And I just got sick of this. And some of the locals were telling me, uh, the guys that they knew of that were in there, they had a huge dormitory, TV, cooking, the lot, there was food to cook, everything. I'm dubbed up, I haven't even got a radio, mate. I've just got a, a book to read. No TVs or anything like that, mate. And I just... I found room for this. And, I, and that's not my style. But with they kind of people. I just... I'll reserve judgment on what I'll say about people who commit the type of offences. You know, because the offence I committed, there's people, the, the the view that people would have on me. So it's a bit like... Well, pe pe people who, who harm kids need to burn in hell. 
Yes, my friend. I totally agree with you, 100%. And that's what most of them were in for. Oh. Some, for their, some for their own kids, Sean. Oh, and that, man. That, that's when it, that's what stirred in me. That's what kicked it off of me. You know, I've got a maniac here. He's caught on the bus in the city centre of Belfast with a bomb. And then I did this bike. A fella called Ray Cronin. Nigel Manso lives on the island as well. He's a, an honorary constable. So the, the, the kind of speedsters, there's no speed limit over there. Manso catches just about everybody. He's a hero over there, you know. And I had no issues in Taylor Man prison either. A few scousers and this and that, Londoners and uh, lads from the Lancashire area and Mancunis and whatnot. We just, we, we just all clicked and got on together. Out playing head tennis and stuff and no issues. And then it was the smell of the cooking. And these people, I could hear the TV and I could hear the football and it was fucking driving me mad, Sean. I said, what's going on in there? And one of the lads told me. He said, the only reason they're in there, the lad I mentioned, Paul Gallica, Paul had been in about 10 years before with a big mate of his. And the governor at the time was a Scottish fella. And when he went to the talk with somebody, he just opened the door and sit in your chair. And he would lie, but he would lie down on their bed, Sean. Like, Wait, what's the problem you've got? Tell me, tell me what the issue is. Just game like Scottish. And Paul was telling me, he said, I wish you'd have met the Scottish governor who was here, wee man, when my big mate, massive bodybuilding. The sex offenders were just mingling with the rest of the inmates. So this big guy had one of them hanging over for the first floor by the ankles. Wow. He, if you don't get rid of every single sex offender in here, get them off these wings or he's going right on his head. Paul said, Brian, he could have stood there for a, a day. This big pal of mine was like 20 stone, former bodybuilder, huge. And they ran all the doors in Blackburn and whatnot, you know, the clubs and stuff. He was a serious character, Paul Gallagher, but me and Paul, they took us out to the police station, Sean. You always see the way the marshals out of there, 20 of us. All the locals. Next morning, they were all back up in the prison. Grassed us up. See the demand note, the note. There's only two places in Britain, Sean, where they used the term Paul. Northern Ireland and Scotland England and other places it's wing A wing B wing C wing so one of the one of the prison officers had was in the army and had been and he turned around and said the jock wrote it there's three guys from Northern Ireland in there one was the bomber and the two other fellas and they they call it Paul and they'd been in prison so we've got three Irish not three Northern Irish who know the prison system and they were called halls. I was in A hall, B hall. And he said, Dad, did you? And what? And the judge, the same guy who sent me to prison came up and done a, like a mock courtroom, Weldon Williams, the Welsh fella. So because we didn't get, they were right on the ball, Sean. In an instant, when we dubbed this door, locked up. They were right above us. We were not getting anywhere near that roof. So the scouser, idiot, mate, we're talking mid January. Rips the sink in the toilet. There's no water or nothing in there. And then he smashes all the windows. We're sitting in a room and it's like minus three, mate. Wind going up the IDC. So it wasn't like we caved in. We just went, listen, we're coming out. It was the only thing to do. Mm -hmm. And, but, I thought if I was anything I, I could justify myself for, it was that, you know, for those kind of people. Why, why, why should they have that? Shun? Why were they given those privileges? All I wanted was everybody to be treated equal. But no, they were given preferential treatment. And I, I wasn't having that. I wasn't accepting that. I mean, I'm only like five, seven, John, nine stone. I'm not, I'm not, I've never been aggressive. I don't have any violence, a uh, record or anything. I've never, ever. And that just flipped on me. But I, I'll give all those guys their due. They all back me up and say, they could go for it. Good. But 40 days, uh, 
in the block. 23 hours, 23 and a half hours a day. Uh, half hour exercise, weather permitting. So there was that time of the year, uh, I spent so many, 24 hours. All I got was a uh, chamber pot and shower. I didn't get up the stairs to the, the main prison. It was just like an old Victorian prison down in the dungeon. And I was in there for 40 days. And because I wouldn't speak to the, the PVC, the prison. Anything else you would like to ask me, Sean? Uh, yeah, tell said, us tell us about your release, Brian. What was that like? About what? Your release. When I got released? Yeah, what was that like? Uh, that was from Lintome, Sean. And... I end up made my way to Doncaster train station. And my brother was waiting for me at Glasgow Central Station when I got the train. But the the best one ever, mate, was Victoria Road. I said, look, I'm going home. I want to go home. Early. They had a taxi outside Victoria Road prison at six o'clock on that Tuesday morning. Took me to Ronald's Way Airport, it's known as, on the Isle of Man. Flew me to John Lennon. And then gave me a ticket to get over to, what was it, Lime Street again? Liverpool. Yes. And I train up the road. Fucking flights and everything, all free, everything paid. And they gave me a few quid. And I'm like, why? You start feeling so guilty with us just being so kind to you, Sean. You know? Keep telling us about your release. Uh, I got released from Lintome and quickly I'll just say the old fella Comerford said to me hey wee Jock have you ever known anyone that's appealed against being refused parole and all I said simply was Tommy there's only one way you're going to find out try and he bloody won it Sean he was out two weeks after that and I got out the week after him so I went to into Doncaster, got the train from Doncaster all the way up to Glasgow. And they were just so welcome to see me. My, I got loads of visits in England from family, Sean. But I didn't have a visit for 18 months because you go to Jersey, it's not like you can go for the day in. So my you know what like, sisters are like and I want to come and see you. I said, look, I'm a big boy, I've put myself here. It's going to cost you a fortune. You can't come here and go home in the same day. I said, but right down beside France. I said, That's, this isn't a uh, Sockton in Edinburgh or Shots or whatever. I said, you know, we can't do this in one day. Even though they would give me accumulated visits, uh, I wasn't putting my family out to that expense, Sean. You know, the 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 the, 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 the offence that I committed and the using and stuff, that, you know, of the, all the nine kids, my parents had, I, I somehow, two younger brothers, Sean. This was after my mum died, mate. I just, the reality of it, Sean, my two younger brothers had gone and married as well. I still was dead with my parents. And the, the, what it was, what it genuinely was, Sean. Uh, I didn't realise how uh, emotionally immature I was. And that's what took me off the rail. And it doesn't seem to make sense. It's something that emotionally immature. I had to accept that. And then you go and commit these heinous crimes, selling and taking. But I was more or less doing it just to feed my own habit. I wasn't making... Have you stayed away from it? Yeah. Here in Glasgow. I'm too well known here, Sean. In the area of Glasgow I come from is Govan, where Sir Alex Ferguson came from. So everybody knows everybody. And if you're seen going anywhere near streets, even the streets where drug dealers are, my sister's phone would be ringing, or one of my bro six brothers, mate. And I would get a pasting. You know? They would want to start all this, right? You're going to the doctor, you 
We want urine tests. And that's the way they are, mate. Just the, same, the kind of thoughts I think and I had. And I thought, that, that lad's, that, that he's, he's, he's the top man. He, that, he's a good lad. That He comes from a, bad, a, a good family. He just put himself in a bad situation. And we just keep living it because we like it or we're enjoying it. And we don't realise the more we're doing it, the more mistakes we're making. And there has to be an end, Sean. It doesn't have to go on forever. You know? And I watched every bit of yours. And, and, and that's what I said. I said, that, I said, I would put my life on it, that lad's from a good family, good background, good upbringing. And I could tell just be uh, how you were uh, articulating the, the way your mannerism, you, the way you were coming across, crisp and clear, precise, and what you were being asked, whack, you had the answer all, you weren't, uh, 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 there was no mumbling and stumbling, you're very crisp and clear, and I thought, that's, that, that guy's not a career criminal, he's, he's, that's not, didn't hear that, I knew me. Thank you, Brian. You know, Are you in a good place now, mentally? Oh, yeah, I mean, couldn't be happier. Really couldn't be. Uh, wow, well, I'm getting a little bit emotional. Oh. Uh, chalk and cheese, Sean. It's the other end of the yeah. scale, brother. You know? Because of what we've been through, we, appre we appreciate everything now, don't we? Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. What I say, Sean, what makes me a rich man? I have every basic that I need. So, got a roof, got a wee flat. I've never driven, I've never been interested in driving. And if I need to go and buy something, I'm in a position to do that. So, we're so rich and we don't, we don't realise it. When you see we, the we, conditions in the states of other countries. We take things for granted until we lose it all. Absolutely, Sean. Until we lose it, buddy. That's that's the mm. thing, mate. Until we lose it, that's when we we, we start the self-loathing and the self-beating. So I, can I just, I just ask you, Sean? Yeah? Where was it again? What what area of America? What part of America were you in? Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. So what neck did you go to? So I started out in a famous one run by a sheriff called Sheriff Joe Arpaio. All right. It's called, it's called the Maricopa County Jail System. Maricopa, yeah. I've seen that on that FBI files thing. Maricopa. Yeah, I was... was, I was uh, on, I did was, you happen to meet Sammy the Bull by any chance? So I'm doing a documentary with Sammy the Bull and his family right now for Discovery Gravano. Channel. Are you going yes, to do Sammy the yes. Gravano? Oh, yeah, yeah, John, you have to it's, 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 you have to get all, that posted up. Let me know, mate, so I can see it. It's all been I've filmed. Seen a couple it's, going of his. Discovery, it's going to come out on Discovery Channel, right? And they filmed they filmed Sammy and his son and all of his family members, and they came to my hometown and filmed my mum and dad and me, and and what went to Wild Man's really? grave. Really, yeah. good stuff, mate. Yeah. You still have your parents. Yeah, my parents are still alive. Uh, God bless. Oh, yeah. that's so I great, really, mate. Really appreciate, that's, really that's, appreciate that's, that. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's great, mate. Uh, uh, after all their troubles, and you came back yeah. home, and they just says, right, we've got our boy back. Get back on track. You, We want you realigned, and we yeah, want I, you legit. Yeah, I'm blessed. Blessed to have such good parents, and, and they've helped me realign, yeah. definitely. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> You just don't realise how blessed we are, Sean, do we? Not until you everything know? goes but to shit. <laughs> that's strange why I said Sammy Gravano and then you're doing that interview. I've seen a few. Did you see the one you had with Michael Franchese? Yes. Um, yeah, I, 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 I hosted a lot of the Michael Franchese shows when he came to the UK. Right. So we had, we had a lot of discussions about Sammy the Bull. Yeah. I actually watched him this morning, Sean, the Bat Sammy. He's got a good channel, good storytelling. Unbelievable. Yeah. The Trump the Trump Towers try to you know how they they ran the oh, the uh, the the guy like 
the, you know what you mean? Your jobs are up first thing that you. The, the unions. The union, union. Sorry, the unions. So they could just pull the guys. Trump Towers is up in Trump, but they haven't realised that all Trump security bodyguards were all ex FBI men. They're in Trump. Yes. Sammy says, "I'm trying to get into his pockets." Yeah. And then Sammy, Sammy, <laughs> he said, "So we just walked away and left them." We when yeah. we went off ski, Sammy, that's all ex FBI men. It says <laughs> security. Sammy says, "Why didn't you tell me that before I was trying to get into his pockets?" <laughs> before we finish, then. Is, can people contact you on social media and stuff like that? Yeah, because they, 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 want, they just want to hear me and just say, are you Brian White? Did you receive seven years for less than three grams? I said yes, and six weeks for the appeal, losing the appeal, and another 60 days, consecutive, consecutive, consecutive. You know, when I mentioned Lord Kalei and the four other law lords came over to set the policies down the sentencing? Yep. He was the chair on my appeal. Wow. I didn't get to speak, Sean. So there was a conflict of interest. The solicitor I had, what is he based my appeal on? What Lord Kalei and his four buddies laid down I didn't really have any say. I had no idea he was going to be on it. He did. So he's, he's basically saying, my client, Mr. Brian White, to you, Lord Kaleo, and the four other lords who were over here, you're out of order. You have to change the sentencing policy because he said so. <laughs> <laughs> and they just went, see you later. And don't forget your yeah. six weeks, Mr. White. You're not getting wow. any nothing. So I just got on with it, Sean. But I, I don't know of anyone who's been given that. And then the two consecutives. Uh, the governor in Lindholm at the time, he was a former prison officer in Armley. And people said he was the right animal. The guy couldn't have been nicer to me. I, I think he was just shocked, Sean. By the way, I had to be called over. Right, you're finished, your 4-8. Now you have to do the full six weeks for losing your appeal. And no, I've got you back over again, Mr. White. I think if that guy could have let me out, he would have let me out. But I had just had to do what I had to do. But you can Google it, Sean, as well. All you have to do is uh, White versus the Attorney General, Jersey Royal Court. You can Google it and it's all there. You can read that it. it tells you it's that. And this, the reason... Uh, apparently was is what they said as well I think I mentioned it to you earlier on was the unusual high purity of it but even still that amount the high purity of it the prosecutor every time he spoke just about he said white a native of Glasgow he kept calling me by my surname and 13 of them Sean Durats, as I said, they all sit there, all done up with their cloaks and whatnot. There, St. Helier, St. Clement, you know, all the, they're like the, the Lord Provost, all those lot. They're not qualified judges or anything. They're, they're just the, the state, uh, represent the state, if you like. And then I found out, whilst I went back after my appeal, Sean, See the guy I was given as a solicitor for my appeal? Over there, they don't have like a, a, a prime minister. It's called the Governor General. The guy who done the appeal for me. See the guy who was running for the next Governor General post? The lawyer I had was his press officer. <laughs> and then somebody <laughs> said to me, Hey, we jock. We all piss in the same pot over here. You don't stand a chance. <laughs> and that's what it was. <laughs> oh, buddies, mate. Oh, buddies. And they just passed me on. Right here, we'll mug them off with him. Did you have oh, to serve the whole seven? What? How, how many years did you serve? Yeah, uh, i done a week short of five. Wow. 
That's a bit a lot, short man. of five, Sean. That's a lot, man, for the, such a small quantity. And the money that I had on me, fifty pound, that was it. But that was from the fella and the girl who came up the night before, and they confiscated that because I think they were given it to. Yeah, of but course. it's something I can't prove. But so only which, which, only that which, one which... time that I gave somebody something from that flat. Next morning, boom. Yeah. Which which socials are you on, Brian? If people want to reach out to you, you on Instagram or anything? Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, I'm on. Uh, uh, no, that TikTok and Facebook. I'm on. I'm on the Facebook. T TikTok and Facebook. Can you send me those links by email? What would you like sent? Your Facebook and your TikTok links. Yeah, sure. It's a Gmail I have, Sean. Yeah. So all right, so it wouldn't be any different. Yeah, sure, I'll send you that, Sean. Shoot those over. And, but you uh, see my face the... page, my face page. It's the, the big German, George Alberts, that played for Rangers. And he scored for Rangers, and he's pointing his two hands at the name on the back. Yeah. And what he was meaning was, if you play for the badge on the front of the shirt, we don't forget mm. the name on the back. Mm. And that's what I have as my, right. you know, my Facebook cover page, whatever you call it. <laughs> I yeah. only started doing Facebook in the lockdown, Sean, two years yeah. ago. I've never, mm. I, I've never been involved in it, mate, you know. Yeah. Well, but, look, it's been, it's been great chatting to you, and, uh, you know, I'm sure you're going to do well from here. Yeah, I will. I'm just uh, getting stronger and stronger and stronger, Sean. Good. And, and it, it, seeing that podcast to yours as well, and I always try to look at Catch, catch you, you know. And yeah. I thought, as I said before, that's not that that guy. That guy's not a. He's not a career criminal. He's not a bad guy. He. I could just tell with your mannerism, the way you were speaking. Yeah. The words you were using. So that boy's, he's educated. And what I said to myself at that time. He streets ahead of me, but I'm probably about fifteen years old. <laughs> I'm fifty-eight, Sean. I like I'm to 50, think I'm just genuine, I'm, honest, and just. I'm 55. So, but yeah. I look like I could be your granddad. <laughs> Thanks very much, Sean. <laughs> Why didn't you say you were 35, bro? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we got a wee laugh. Oh, thank you, brother. So, gonna... what would you like to send? The. Yeah, in an email, email, just send over your send over thing. your Facebook and send over your TikTok and any photos as well you want us to include. Oh, I don't know about photos, mate. I'm on the FBI 10 Most Wanted. <laughs> 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 no, Sean, uh, thank you for having me on, buddy. It's oh, been great chatting to you. And yeah, like you I too. said, if we go off air now, you can Google it and just say, Wait, my, my surname's spelled W-H-Y-T-E. And the Brian's B R I A N. And all you have to do is press the Google. White versus Attorney General. Jez Royal Court. Yeah. And it'll People all come up and Google it's all there that. for you to read. The exact amount yeah. that was there. It tells you about the unusual high purity yep. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it mentions my younger brother. Okay. Also. But he was totally innocent, Sean. Mm. So it's all there for you. You can go and have a look at it as well when you get a bit of time. All and right. You'll see that. What I've said is just, the only thing it doesn't state is the the movements, the different prisons. That's that's the only thing it, it's not there. All but, right, for uh, the viewers, then for the viewers, then let us know what you thought about this interview in the comments and in the description box. I'll put links in to Brian's Facebook and TikTok if you want to go and support his work. Huge thank you for sharing your story with us, man, and we we wish you much luck for the future. So you take care, Brian. Thank you very much, Sean. And uh, long may you run, my friend. You too, my friend. Cheers. All the very best. This podcast is sponsored by Gadfly Press. We're proud to announce the publication of Scotland's Johnny Boy, The Bird That Never Flew. From the back cover, all his life, Johnny Boy Steele has been running, first from an abusive father, then from the rigours of an approved school 
and a young offender's jail. And finally, from the harshness of adult prison, this book details how the Steel Brothers staged the most daring breakout that Glasgow's Barlini prison had ever seen and recounts what happened when their younger brother Joseph was falsely accused of the greatest mass murder in Scottish legal history. We're talking the ice cream wars there. If Johnny Boy had wings, he would have flown to help his family, but he would have to wait for freedom to use his expertise to publicise young Joe's miscarriage of justice. This is a compelling, often shocking, and uncompromisingly honest account of how the human spirit can survive against almost crushing odds. It is a story of family love, friendship, and ultimately, a desire for justice. So, Scotland's Johnny Boy, The Bird That Never Flew, is available worldwide on Amazon. Link in the description box below this video. Thank you for supporting our sponsor. Cheers.